When playing your favorite games, did you ever just come to a stop to appreciate all the work that went into it? Even if you look at early concept art and see things that were planned but never fully realized, you still gotta be fascinated by the ambitions. But that's not what we're here for today. We'll take a look beneath the surface at the things that were put into the game but got abandoned and left inaccessible in regular gameplay. So join me on the journey through Just Cause 3's unused content. Let's start it off with vehicles. Some vehicles in the game were meant to have a premium or signature version. These vehicles are the Urga Buggy, Miguelo Vistosa, Autostrad D90 and Squalo X7 for premium. And the Stria PW Jetski as well as the Stria Cucciola for a signature. It's fair to assume those would have had increased stats and maybe some design changes. Their files are still in the game, but they are just copies of the default cars. Never meant to appear in the game, but still unused are debug vehicles. Almost all vehicles have exact copies of themselves that are invincible, with no other changes. There's also an unused Z80 version of the Stria Rustico tractor. It does kinda work, but there's no model of its bomb, and it does use the default explosion visuals. The new explosion physics are there though. Next up, we have this beautiful car. The DLC test car, as it's called in the files, has this unique paint job. It also doesn't have a spoiler, as the Vistosa didn't have one either in early screenshots of the game. There's also no animation for the doors, and its interior isn't finished. The doors actually worked in a beta build of Just Cause 3 that was leaked in 2020, but that's gonna be its own video. Apart from this, and some other small visual differences, it is the same car though. The only tank in the final game to have a shield is the Imperator Bavarium tank, but the CS Ultra tank had one too, though probably only for testing. The shield model still exists in the tank's archive will work if you simply enable the tank to use shield without any further work. It perfectly fits the tank and works just as intended. There exists an Urga Rome D with a shield. The shield doesn't actually mimic the heli's shape, but is a giant squished sphere, which is why some people call it the UFO helicopter. The effects and weapon shots aren't properly aligned, and it's missing some sounds, but apart from that it's fully functional. It's called the Prototype Boss Helicopter. And at first, we all assumed that that's the heli Diravello was meant to be using. But again, the beta build comes in handy and reveals it was only used for an early fight at a test location. Assuming when this was made, they didn't have the MS title yet. But let's get to the DLCs. The Mech Line Assault DLC has two unused mechs. To start, the civilian mech. It has an Eden-like color scheme, but doesn't have a weapon. In its weapon place, it has a hand-like claw. It's also not able to pick up things with its mech grip, and can only use the punch. What's interesting though, even though it has no weapon, the UI still shows the name London Peacekeeper. Now, you might say, hey, I've seen that mech before. And you'd be right, it can be seen in the final mech land assault mission, when going down with the elevator. What might surprise you, those aren't actually vehicles, but images. Definitely a clever trick, I didn't catch on to much later. The second mech that's unused is the debug mech. It's similar to the civilian mech by having it a claw hand, no weapon and a half functioning mech grip. Though it has the black hand paint job and a bunch of parts for the black hand mech. But now to the interesting stuff, an almost completely unique vehicle that is left unused. The Autostrad Snowmobile. Once spawning it, it does. But don't worry. Once adding a stat file it's missing, it does. Yeah, it's not really usable. But after some work, I made most of it work. And this is most likely how it was meant to handle, if it was ever finished. One thing that surprised me the most when I found out, is that the giant cranes, like these ones at the capital's harbors, and potentially the large ones too, are meant to be controllable. A file called Crane Harbor Controller mentions a few crane controls like Rotate, Toggle Magnet, Drive and more. 
But now the big one, the submarine. A camera script called Vehicle Submarine Camera exists in the files, but not just that, there's also a few unused sounds and UI icons, to which I'll get later. For now, let's have a listen to the sound files. Trains may have actually meant to have a bigger role too. In the final game, they never stop anywhere and you can't control them. But there are some unused sound files that suggest it may have meant to have stops. The sound files are the train engine starting up and shutting down. The boat from Just Cause 2 may have also been planned to make a return in Just Cause 3. Or it was simply just left in but three sound files referencing a Just Cause 2 boat heavy patrol are still left in the sound files. And lastly, some vehicles that were planned but have no files remaining. Tanks were meant to have extra treads, but they went with wheels instead, which is probably a reason why the snowmobile was abandoned too. There was also gonna be an amphibious sports car, which can be seen in concept art. Some concept art also shows an odd abandoned version of the Stria Hioia police car, which was meant to be used by police. And to address something, some rumors on the Just Cause wiki claim there is an unused Aiden variant of the Urgas Tsum. I have no idea where these theories come from, there's no files for it. Now. With the vehicles done, let's cover the weapons now. Sadly, there's not as many, but what is here is already super interesting. First up, we got the matching weapon for the DLC test car. It's based on the existing U96 Cladivo and has a similar paint job to the test car. Also, putting it on your bag looks like this. Then we got the Sun Gun. It's an early test version of the Eden Spark and uses the Airstrike gun model. It has a unique UI, visuals and sound. It's pretty much functional, apart it does no damage. We also got the Typhoon Gun. It's actually the most unique unused weapon. It has its own model and functionality. Aim it at anything interactable and shoot it and it'll go flying off. It's basically a leaf blower on steroids. This weapon actually has some unused sound files that were never put to use. And lastly, we got the guitar case. If you've ever played Just Cause 3 multiplayer before, chances are you already used this gun, as it comes with a default spawn menu. It's really just a guitar with a rocket launcher. But Rika has a unique aiming pose that's also a reference to the movie Desperado. Apart from that, it acts pretty much like the UVK rocket launcher. What's this file? A stat file telling me only 20% of you watching this are subscribed? But for real, I won't bore you with this. If you like my content, feel free to subscribe. It really means a lot and helps grow the community. But with this, back to the video. Let's continue with unused locations. There are only three really, so let's go through them quickly. First up, the most exciting one, the UI test wall. It's um war. It also sets the weather to dawn when loading the location. There's also an event you can call, which is activate front end camera. And it'll put the camera here. I'd assume that was perhaps an early start screen test. You can of course also disable it and the camera returns to normal. Secondly, we got the benchmark gas stations. It's a set of six gas stations. And when the benchmark sequence file is loaded in also, it blows them all up at once. Probably just used to test performance in big explosion really late in development. And lastly, we got the satellite test base. 
is part of the Stingway area and features a bunch of walkways, chaos objects and a guard tower. Most of it is sadly invisible though, there is some invisible collision and some of it doesn't have collision at all. Next up we got a whole cast of game mode. When I take a look at this tablet prop from Dima, you might notice it looks to have a screenshot of the game on it. Dig up the high res texture of it and you can clearly see a selection menu for ghost race mode. I'd assume this was to race your friends in the race challenges that do exist in the final game. Though it says how your friends did during a mission on top. Either they meant actual missions or it's just their wording for the mini games. And of course, you also get to look at a quite early looking version of the game with a simple looking Rico, background in the distance and no lighting. It also appears like there was meant to be a new game plus feature. There is one unused sound file of the radio guy saying this. Hello again, good people of Medici. Happy to tell you that I'm back. And so is Medici. Every base, every outpost, every checkpoint, we're back, citizens. We are back. Viva Medici. Now to take a look at something that could have changed the game completely. In earlier stages, the game wasn't meant to be full price, but was instead going to include microtransactions. This was the first scene in some leaked screenshots from a build that's almost a year before release. Sadly, this never leaked to the public, as much as I wish it would, because I need to see it. Anyways, some remnants of this still exist in the files. For example, the Webber Drop UI file is still called Com Store. All items that can be dropped are listed in a file called items.onlinec and one of the variables in there for items is purchasable. And lastly, there is still a folder called store in the UI folder. The beta build also has various references to diamonds, which are the currency used to buy items. Though it's sadly unknown how much real worth these will carry. There's actually some sounds left of this shop, so let's have a listen. Keeping on the topic of the item shop, consumable and collectible items. It seems that vehicles and weapons would not have been the only items that were purchasable on the item shop, or even from the rubber shop. The item file also has a variable for consumable and collectible. Perhaps you would have been able to purchase the collectibles the final game has, like the vintage parts and Duravello tapes, instead of searching for them. The consumables, however, are more mysterious. Perhaps they could have been used to give Rico stat boosts. This is also backed by the store folder, which has an icon for armor. Just cause 2 had ammo boxes all over the map that you could collect for additional armor, so perhaps they wanted to bring that back in one form or another. Other than that, there's also an amnesia icon. I have no idea what this could be for. Onwards to unused images. Good news, there's a lot. To start with, Avalanche probably experimented with Mad Max models. At least the body and engine texture remain in the prototypes folder. We also have this one. Apart from the two store icons I showed you before, there are also these ones here. A flares icon and a nitrous icon. The nitrous icon also has an exact copy of itself called Xeno Hurry. Then we also have an icon for the CS110 Archangel. An icon of the jet ski with our textures and some car icons, which some have very interesting lighting. There's also some pistol icons. One shows an early military paint shop in the back, and one is mislabeling UVK as a fire leech. Some placeholder icons show a spoilerless Vistosa, or perhaps the DLC test car. There's icons for the rocket and rubber ducky boat which go unused since those cannot be rebel dropped. For weapon placeholders, we have an image of a sniper rifle, Eden Spark and scrams in a trash can. Then we also have an icon for the unused guitar case and typhoon gun. We also have a ton of unused upgrade icons. This one called Detector could have been a range upgrade for the icon detector perhaps. 
and the bent knees may have been an early name for the impact reduction. Then we got a bunch of icons that seem to be related to the submarine. Then we have a ton of other icons that would take way too long to go over. However, the ones of interest are these hammer icons. There is a Thor hammer easter egg, but I can't really imagine there was a hammer weapon plan for the game. Some unused graphics of the HUD include the speedometer, which was probably used at some point in development. There are some more scribbles, a needle for a speedometer, and a longer vertical boost meter. Then we also have these icons here. It also has this blue tiled circle, which judging by its name was an early version of the mech damage indicator. Lastly for you Eisner, you also have this height indicator, that was probably used for helis, planes and the wingsuit. Then there is also a cutoff Just Cause 2 logo, that is in a photo simply called Collectibles, and was likely a placeholder for collectibles like the vintage parts and tapes. Then there's reference images, which are these. And for early challenge icons, we have these two, labeled Region 11, which is likely meant to be Region 1, so Insula Fonte. And we have Chima Gallo, which is the file name for Chima Leon. Next up is Anya's text, where we don't have a lot. The aforementioned London Peacekeeper weapon on the civilian mech is one of them. But say, you were to make this Sam player controlled, it would show the name Capstone Artex in the weapon UI, which is normally never seen, and the words Switch to Dev and Switch to Ship, which are seen in the beta build to hint you to open the Dev menu on the pause screen, are still there. There's actually unused NPCs. We have this Critter Scorpion from Just Cause 2, which was probably meant to return, but was cut in the end. Then we have a version of Mario called Debug Follower, that, guess what, he follows you when you spawn him in. Additionally, there's the Rico Previewer, Civilian Previewer and Enemy Previewer, all three using the same menacing pose, and just standing there. While on the topic of NPCs, perhaps Gran Madre was meant to have a slightly bigger role too. There are several sound files of her that go unused, have a listen. Are you and Mario getting into trouble again? Rico, come in! I have fresh octopus salad for you. Rico? Rico, have you given that Diravello a piece of your mind yet? Rico, how do you expect to lead a little revolution if you do not eat? Now for factions. There are three unused factions. The Mafia, Police and um, Pirates. Let's start with the Mafia. Luch was meant to be part of this faction. There also exist several concept drawings of Mafia members, also having Luch in them. In the game's files, besides Luch's regular character files in the main character folder, there are also two copies of him called Mafia 001 and 002. As for the police faction, early promotional images of Just Cause 3 show the police car. The police is also still mentioned in the game, but can't be found at all. The police faction is still listed in a file called factions.bin, which stores the behavior of different factions, again indicating it was removed very late. Its behavior to other factions is as follows. Allies with Black Hand, ignores civilians, attacks pirates, allies with police, attacks the rebels, attacks Rico, and allies with soldiers. There are also three police member NPCs left in the files, namely the police captain, police officer and police SWAT. And lastly, the pirates. I have no clue as to why this is here, as it wouldn't fit it with Just Cause 3 setting at all. This could either be an early or internal name for the Mafia faction or just simply a placeholder. Its behavior is simply to attack everyone but members of the pirate faction. And last step, we get to have a look at an earlier world map. This file is called Water Mod and is a death map. Landmass is represented by brown or black, shallow water is represented by green, and deep water is represented by red. 
What makes this special, however, is the fact that it shows land masses not in the final game. And by that, a lot of them. On top we can see several islands that can't be found in the game. The ones on the left are overlaid by Lacrima Island, which is part of the Mechland Assault DLC. In the top left, we can see that the bottom of the volcano is longer than it actually is. Finally, to the left of the main island, there are three smaller islands that are also not found in the game. After the Bavarium Sea Heist DLC, the Stingray area is where they would be. These three landmasses actually were on the map for the Just Cause 3 Wingsuit Tour promotional app that was found on the Play Store a few years ago. But well, this map shows exactly the terrain of the League beta build from June of 2015, and everything it has is there. The islands on top are test areas, the volcano is much longer at its south side, and the smaller islands can be found as well. There's also this scribble of the map found in the UI folder. For the very end, I got some unused music. There's a lot, so let's go. First up, a track called Costa del Sol in a folder called Easter Egg. It's taken from Final Fantasy VII and was maybe planned to be heard somewhere. Next up, a bunch of songs that sound like they don't belong into the game at all. So it's fair to assume they were created when the game had a different direction, or maybe they were related to the Mafia faction. Listen to all of these in full length in my Just Cause 3 unused music playlist, by the way. There's also some variations of tracks that do appear, like a clear version of the song Mario Dances 2 or the song from the Bolo Easter egg that was singing. Well, that's all for the unused content of Just Cause 3. I hope I managed to excite you with all this, and I hope you're looking forward to more like this. If there's anything I find in the future, you will find it on the game's TCRF page. I'll also be announcing when I add anything on Discord and Twitter. In the future I will make a dedicated video on the Just Cause 3 beta and Just Cause 4 and the other games as well. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.